You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Now on the Mo Kelly Show, it's Tiffany Arms the Viral Load. She's speaking on the viral thing, social media can bring. Facebook, Insta, X, TikTok, the viral load with Tiffany Arms. Viral Load. KFI, later with Mo Kelly, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Tiffany Hobbs, let me just first say, fantastic job while I was away. Thank you. You made sure that Mark did not wreck the bus. Came back, the studio was in one piece. We got kind of (laughs) close, but, you know, we were able to pull it together. We didn't want it. At least you didn't end up as part of the viral load. It almost. It got very close on Monday, but we held it together. Yeah, who was it who <laughs> kept talking about tampons on Monday? Was that that was, was that Mark, Mark Ronner? Okay, that's what I thought. I don't, I don't even remember that conversation. Uh, what did I say? You remember? Yes. It, well, I I'm not going to repeat it because you you said something to the effect of Mark, you know, pull back. Oh, I remember Mark, now. No, 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 I remember. We we're, we're, were talking about uh, profiling uh, and getting profiled when when you take your stuff through the checkout at the grocery store. Uh huh. Yes. And Mark had some anecdotes about that, including tampons. So instead of getting into that story, let's <laughs> and no, no, let's into, revisit that. Let's not. Let's go into something equally as sorted at this at this point. There's a story that is viral everywhere. It involves bank fraud, TikTok, and very dumb young people. What am I talking about? The Chase bank fraud. TikTok scam that's been heard around the world. It's not a scam. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. It's an attempted scam, but because these are not very sophisticated people or thinkers, it's just dumb. Very much the Darwin Awards, if you will. So when it comes to this story, again, it's it's viral on TikTok. And what happened is there's a, a glitch at Chase Bank. And a bunch of TikTokers somehow found out that you can use the digital platform for Chase Bank, take a picture of a check that you write to yourself, attempt to, um, um, what is it, deposit this check, and you cancel the check before it actually clears. The the check is not going to clear because you're writing it with money that you don't have, but Chase somehow allowed these checks to slip through a very slim loophole, and many people were able to deposit upwards of $200,000, $5,000, $25,000 $200,000, $25,000 into their accounts. Momentarily. Momentarily. And the moment literally was maybe over the course of hours, if that, at the most. And while these people were celebrating their new inflated bank accounts, what they didn't know is that Chase was following their every move, tracking everything, and undoing all of these attempted fraudulent deposits. And when they did zero in on these accounts, they immediately rescinded the deposit, revoked it, and then debited the accounts basically for the money that was there. They then had these negative accounts. People who had deposited these large sums of money saw their accounts drop well below zero into the tens of thousands of dollars in back money owed to Chase. Not counting overdraft. Not counting overdraft, of course. This is just the monies that they were depositing. And because of that, these TikTokers who originally had celebrated their victory and being able to deposit this money, which is the first mistake of many, why would you put it online? But they wanted to do that. It's attention-seeking behavior. That's a part of virality, as we've been learning. They put it online. They got embarrassed. And then you would think it would stop there. No, they actually recorded themselves showing these negative accounts because you have to show the full story or else it's not, a, I guess, a good TikTok. I'm not sure. So they showed the full story that their accounts were now in the red. They were shamed. They were um, just completely surprised and not knowing how to undo this. These people are now on the hook for all of this money. There's another part to this. At some point during this last weekend when this story broke, people lined up at Chase Banks around the country to try and do this scam. 
So if you were driving by a Chase Bank, if you were trying to go to a Chase Bank, you might have noticed longer lines than usual. You might even notice that there may be more restrictions on your account and depositing abilities uh, on the digital app. It's all because they're trying to still undo this attempted fraud. There's another portion to this. Not only did they engage in bank fraud and wire fraud, they memorialized it online oh. with the evidence to make sure if if they want to press charges that they would be convicted of convicted of both, which are federal felonies. Yes. Stupid, dumb, viral load story. Perfect for us to share on KFI because this is what's out there. And if you didn't know, now you know. Second story is something else that is very frustrating. If you're a traveler, if you fly, you know going through the security lines is already a hassle. If you don't have the passes that allow you to go through quickly, then you're in line with the rest of us loading your things into these gray bins so that they can go through the scanning. Well, now there's a new phenomenon again on TikTok, and it's called, quote, the new digital flex. And what it is, is people are using these gray bins that you load your computers into, you put your shoes into, uh, your other items from your bag into before you put it through the x-ray machine. They're loading these gray bins very meticulously, very carefully to curate an experience. What do I mean by this? They're huh? taking out their lipstick, if it's uh, someone who's into makeup, all of their makeup items, and they're placing it in the bin very carefully, taking the time, holding up the line behind them so that they can get a perfect picture of all of their items carefully placed in these gray bins. It might be sports equipment. It might be, again, makeup or personal items. It could be anything that people want to show online as being something that they have in their bag for likes, for clicks, for clout. It's the new digital flex and it's irritating flyers everywhere. What's the what's the visual value of showing What's in my toiletries bag or whatever? There's something about the gray backdrop being a contrast to more colorful items or just items in general. And so this gray backdrop really is the kind of focal point. They're putting their things in there and they're spacing it out again very carefully so you can see each individual item. The so first annoying. person who does that and I'm in the line, I promise you. There's going to be a misunderstanding. There's going to be a scene. They're literally holding up lines for minutes and minutes. And the TSA workers are starting to get wind of this because it has become such a large or a popular trend. So if you're in line at these airports and you're noticing that they're taking longer than usual or you're seeing people really trying to place things, they likely are engaging in this new photo opportunity with the gray bins. Social media is going to be the death of us Social all. Social media is absolutely our entryway into all things bad. The next story comes along with audio, and I'm not going to get into it just yet because this audio is worth playing on its own, but just know, should you ever be out on the open ocean like Mo Kelly and Tawala just were this past weekend, and you're out there without the protection of a huge cruise ship, you're brave, you're just out there in the ocean for some reason, you very well may come into contact with a large whale, specifically a sperm whale, and that whale may just swallow you. And I'll tell you what happens if you get swallowed by a sperm whale when we come back for the second part of the viral load. Sperm whale swallow. Puck to and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Now it's time for the viral load with Tiffany. Live on KFI is Later with Mo Kelly. She'll talk about the toughness on social media. The viral load with Tiffany Hobbs. KFI Mo Kelly live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Let's get to the second portion of the viral load with Tiffany Hobbs. Mo, have you ever gone whale watching or seen a whale crest while out looking at the ocean? Yes, and yes, it was 1980 Arnold Elementary School in Torrance. 
<clears throat> I've gone well watching once in middle school and I saw nothing but the bottom of the trash can because I have bad motion sickness and not my sea legs. So oh, good my, for you. My apologies. However, if you're ever again out on the open ocean, you might encounter a whale and it will likely be a sperm whale if you're in the Pacific Ocean. Well, there's a new horrifying simulation that shows just what happens to your body if you are swallowed by a whale, there's a video showcasing this simulation that's gone viral on many platforms, but especially on YouTube. And it's from the Zach D Films account. What is it? Well, the narrator says, if you were swallowed by a sperm whale, you would be squeezed down its massive throat and the actual video has a simulation a digital simulation of presumably a man being swallowed by a sperm well and it tells you and shows you kind of a step by step um <laughs> uh situation or if if you will about what it might feel like or look like and the narrator goes on and says You'd continue down its esophagus and into a series of stomach chambers that are filled with digestive acids. These acids would immediately start breaking down your body. But even if you managed to avoid the acid, the lack of air inside the whale would quickly cause you to suffocate. Can they just skip to the end and say it'd be a horrible death? Well, not everyone dies. <gasps> which is what leads into why I chose this story. And while this clip, this digital simulation has gone viral on YouTube, it is directly correlating with a man who actually survived being swallowed by a whale. And we're going to go to a clip in one moment, but just know that this man, Michael Packard in 2021 was diving in Massachusetts when he was scooped up into the mouth of a humpback whale. Go for it, Foosh. I just got hit by it felt like a Mack truck and everything went black. Just home from a brief stay in the hospital, Michael Packard still cannot believe he's alive. And all I could feel was just muscle and skin all around me. I couldn't see anything and I could feel the movement of the whale swimming and I was in total shock. Michael was diving off his lobster boat near Provincetown. He says he was in that whale's mouth for a good 20 to 30 seconds before the whale surfaced and spit him out. And then all of a sudden I saw a light and I was thrown from his mouth. He, he was shaking his head trying to eject me out of his mouth. And then all of a sudden I see Mike feet first coming out of the water like this. Never heard of anything like this before. Scientists are astounded by the encounter of biblical proportions. They think the humpback was probably feeding on small fish. The area that they're gulping is enormous. And it just so happened that that volume of water included um, this diver. Michael says he thought about his wife and two sons in the jaws of that whale, just thankful he's home with them again. As soon as I landed in the water and was floating there in excruciating pain, I was like, oh my God, I'm alive. So, you may and not Michael, die. And Michael, he uh, is in some pain. He's got some bumps and bruises. You may not die, he Mo. He plans you get swallowed by a whale? You may not die. You may live through it like Michael Packard and be able to tell the tale of being swallowed by a whale. Yeah, if I end up in See a whale's mouth <laughs> for whatever reasons, it's my fault. It will hock to and spit you out. Hock to and spit on that thing. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, look, just just chalk me up as dead if a whale swallows me up. I'm I'm not trying to. I don't know. Mm. The fact that he was in the whale's mouth for an estimated thirty to forty seconds. That's a long that's ass time. A long okay? time. Have you heard commercials on the station? Thirty <laughs> seconds. That's a long time. Yeah. And Can I say said, that? <laughs> <laughs> completely dark, by the way, when you're in there. Not that I've been in there, but reading I, more. About I have this. to assume, unless the whale's mouth is open, it's not like there's a light source. So. Uh, okay. Smarty pants. Gosh. And spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> Last story. There have been pictures circulating of Robert De Niro on the internet. Love Robert De Niro. Fantastic thespian of the highest order. But what people are talking about is not his acting ability. No, they're talking about the size of his ears. And these pictures have gone viral because. Someone posted a picture of Robert De Niro back when he was in his 20s 
And Robert De Niro now that he's in his 80s and the side by side profiles do in fact show a big disparity between the size of his ears in his 20s and the ears in his 80s. This is not news. This is not breaking ground with anything. Your ears grow your whole life, I thought. But again, this is social media. And the reason it's gone viral is because there are there's a whole generation of people who were unaware that your ears actually grow over the course of your of your of your life. People were thinking that your ears more or less stay the same. So I have some statistics and some facts for some of you. Back in June of 1993, some testing happened, some research happened, and this group of medical professionals picked 206 patients over the age of 30 to study. They studied these students or these patients over the course of over 20 years in which they were able to find that ears do in fact grow an average of 0.22 millimeters per year, which is the equivalent to one centimeter or half an inch. Ears grow a half an inch per year. That is not avant-garde. Well, they can't be a half an inch per year because in 20 years, your ears would be like, 10 inches. I mean, hey, depending on how small your ears are when you start, Mo. I guess size does matter. Puck to and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> I'm not the medical professional here. I'm just reading the study. So I don't know where they gathered these people from, but they have some fast growing ears. And so they were able to conclude at the very least that our ears do grow much quicker than we might even understand. So Robert De Niro's ears being larger than they were when he was in his 20s is in fact true and he's still robert de niro one of the greatest of all time regardless it's weird i look i know from generation to generation the newer generation always thinks that they've discovered something they found Mm -hmm. out something you know that they they have found the miracle of life that the previous generation did not but a lot of this is well-known science i think your nose grows as well it does it and at this rate all of us are going to be dumbo probably probably soon if you live long enough if we, if you're lucky enough to live long enough your ears will grow and so will your nose get over it that's it no no more whale anecdotes no more sperm whale anecdotes no more tampon anecdotes mark ronner no more any of that we're done no more hawk tour no more hawk tour at all okay i'll leave her out of this you're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Welcome to Mo on the Movies. Oh, Red. Don't be ridiculous, darling. It's Mo on the Movies. Kiss me. Not a chance. <laughs> KFI, Mo Kelly, we're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. As I get older, I thoroughly enjoy good, and let me emphasize, good documentaries. And I'm also realizing as I get older, I'm watching documentaries which overlap with my life in some way. I've lived long enough where I may remember some aspects of the documentary in my life, and it kind of fills in the gaps and blanks And you get to see something that you thought you knew just a little bit differently. And you know it a lot better or you have a better perspective. Case in point, on Peacock, there is a new documentary called Gary, which is about the life and times and untimely death of Gary Coleman. Arguably the greatest child actor of all time, arguably. And they go into that. Talk about his impact on popular culture, the uh, the degree of his superstardom, at least for the television medium. And if you don't know or don't remember him, he was the star of the, the, the Norman Lear. He didn't produce it, but he was part of the development of it. Uh, the sitcom Different Strokes, in which you had two black kids who were adopted by a white, very rich man. And this was like 1981. They lived in Upper West Side, New York. And the show, for its time, was both a hit and very controversial. Very controversial. And they talk about the hate mail that the show received from both sides, from black people and white people, and what they thought the show was actually doing for race relations. But also, it talked about how 
Gary Coleman, his beginning, how he had a kidney transplant at five years old and what he had to endure each day uh, for the rest of his life, where he did not have a functioning kidney from age maybe 12 to 42 at the time of his death, which is from what I know of just about what the what the hell that Tawala Sharp has gone through and his kidney transplant. It's like, how is that even possible? So you get to see um, a side of him. There are handwritten letters. There are a lot of home movies, things that you would have never seen before. But what makes this uh, documentary so good, and that's the only word I can really think of, is they have all of the key people who were in his life, both his mother and father, who are still living, participated in it. His ex-wife, who was there at the time of his death, is in this documentary who sat down and gave extensive interviews um there his previous business manager and and lawyer all the key people who are responsible for anything good and bad which happened to him who are still alive todd bridges is also in it um you get a real sense of what it was like on set and what it was like in his life and not to give it all away because it's no big secret how the the story ended it's it is a truly tragic and sad, sad story. The kid was a true star. Different Strokes was a groundbreaking show. The audience loved Gary. He had a spirit about him. He was always an entertainer. If someone had told me my life would have been like this early enough where I could have got out, I would have got out. That actor's parents and business advisors skimmed some of his earnings. They took $770,000 and gave it to themselves. I'd have taken that very deeply to heart. He said, I just wanted to say goodbye. I cannot take this anymore. And we cried. His life was fraught with disappointments. From 1985 until his death, he lived with not a single kidney. All he wanted was to find somebody who he could love. Their relationship was tumultuous. Alan, when we're here, we're going to say, quick, there's a lot of blood on the floor. The death of Gary Coleman was suspicious. I don't know that I can say without being sued. People think that I did this because I'm the ex-wife, I'm the evil person, right? His life is a cautionary tale. A big man and this little kid's body. The greatest child actor of all time. There's certain performers that change our lives. He was one of them. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. And for me, Gary Coleman, when I say he was a contemporary, I'm saying we're a, he's only like a year older than me. So I'm growing up as he is growing up. And when I was a child... Yeah, I want to live the life of Gary Coleman to be a, a superstar at my age, whatever that was, and have your own TV show. I remember when he first appeared on Good Times, and that was my introduction to him. He had a guest starring role in an episode of Good Times, and then that eventually led to different strokes. And you knew about the issues with the money if you were alive at that time. And you knew about his health struggles if you were alive at that time. But you didn't know the depths of... I would call the depravity of his parents and everyone involved gave their sides of the story. But the way it was presented in the documentary, it was so even handed. It's one of the few times I felt they're really leaving it up to you to form an opinion. One of the central figures is one of his best friends, Dion, who grew up with him and was on the fringes of the entertainment industry and eventually became his business manager. But he had these photos he had i guess he was almost like an executor of the state he had access to all of this memorabilia handwritten notes home movies which were used in this and you get to see a, a side of gary coleman f-bombs and all that you just never saw the synchronicity of this is really weird to me and i, I hate to suggest this but i think you and i might have some kind of weird psychic link because before right before you told me that you'd seen this one of the movie people that I follow and interact with and have exchanged uh, movie information with says they tracked down this uh, highly sought after Gary Coleman 1985 TV movie called Playing with Fire. Do you remember this? Only by name. Never saw it. Well, it's young Gary Coleman as a teenage arsonist, pyromaniac. And uh, this thing, like, 
aficionados have been trying to find this thing for a year, and it turned up in in one of the forums uh, the, that I look in for rare movies. Uh, so I need to see this documentary. Yeah, I I learned a lot about someone I thought I knew. I learned more about his marriage, his relationships with not only his family but women. Um, I don't want to give too much away because I want people to see it. But there there is an emotional journey that he went on where you can only be sad for him at the end. He was a much more sympathetic person, I believe, than how he was portrayed in the media. There are a number of people who died early like that, who were so promising, uh, who had health struggles that maybe we never really knew about or fully understood the extent of. Like, I think of Michael Dunn. Do you know who that was? No, I don't. He played Dr. Miguelito Loveless on the Wild Wild West. He was a dwarf, and he was just plagued with health problems. And so just when you find out what some of these people endure, the sheer nerve and courage that they showed by just showing up to work every day and putting on a good face, it's uh, outright heroic. Well, I will say this as someone who idolized Gary Coleman and wanted to be, uh, at least live that life. From what I know now, watching that documentary, there's no way in the world, no way in hell I would have wanted his life at any point and at any stage. I need to see this right away. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Before we get out of here, I have to remind you about the Boys and Girls Clubs of Carson, which is part of the Boys and Girls Club of America movement. They provide outcome-based after-school, during-school, and summer programming to youth ages 6 through 18 years old. Boys and Girls Club of Carson has just announced that this year's annual Blue Door Bash Gala will be held at SoFi Stadium on Saturday, October 5th. And I'm honored to once again serve as its MC. This year's theme is Mission Possible. And the Blue Door Bash Gala will feature a silent auction and a complete evening of celebration of community leaders and also future leaders. So come out and be part of the festivities. You can get all the information at bgccarson.org. Again, that's bgccarson.org. And hopefully I'll see you Saturday night, October 5th at SoFi Stadium. Earlier in the show... I was talking about how I was I was frustrated at streaming platforms where you'd have commercials and then you try to watch something and then they have commercials. And if you would pause, you'd have a commercial staring back at you or some sort of advertisement. I was talking last segment about Gary. If you didn't know, I gave a raving review of the documentary Gary, which is about the life and death of Gary Coleman, the former child superstar actor. And that was one of the drawbacks for me. And it took away from some of the enjoyment of the experience because the ads were obtrusive. Like I pushed pause because I wanted to see if there was any extra information about the scene like they do with Amazon Prime. No, they don't do that. They just serve up an ad. And so whether whereas I recommend Gary, the documentary on Peacock, I don't exactly recommend Peacock streaming platform itself so um, i know that sounds like i'm compartmentalizing but there's a distinction to be made i think i would have loved it any more even more if it were uninterrupted altogether i actually just canceled my peacock uh, subscription because uh they'll offer you specials i got it for like two dollars a month for six months but if it shoots back up to six or seven bucks nope no they are they've already announced it's going to shoot back up because of the uh all the olympic stuff I can't remember. We did the story, and they had raised the prices specifically because of the Olympics. Peacock is worth maybe two bucks a month to me, certainly not more. And I originally canceled it because they dumped Mehdi Hassan, uh, and I was a fan of his journalism. So no way am I paying six or seven bucks a month for Peacock. Yeah, it, it is mostly – they have, obviously, documentary and some long-form content and some movies but i'm not looking at peacock for just about anything i was looking for the documentary because i heard about the documentary and they said oh it's available on peacock that was the only reason i wasn't looking for it on peacock i was looking for the documentary because i heard about it and you know i had to get to peacock yeah it really makes you wonder how long peacock's going to be around at least in its current form because what do you go there regularly for? What do you count on it for? I mean, some special events, maybe some sporting things. But uh, I just randomly, you know, if I'm cruising around, think, 
All right, let's see what's on Peacock. It's, you know what? It's not my destination most nights. It's not. And the only reason my household has it is my wife is addicted to Bravo. And so all the reality shows are on Peacock. That is why she watches it. And that's why I am able to watch it. I'm not paying for that stuff. Well, like what reality shows? All the the, the Real the, Housewives, Real Housewives, Housewives yeah. of everything. But the for me, I see Peacock's one of mine because yeah, to the point to Mark's point, there's not a lot of like new stuff. But I feel like they are the ones that get newest movies earliest, and there's plenty of c- c- how much Mark likes Tubi. I like to watch reruns, and I feel like they have a broad um, spectrum of different. They do. shows from different networks like you know i mean it's just surprising like someone some, just as an example like everybody loves raymond that's cbs but it's on peacock so it's just like yeah they have everything so yeah, yeah. All old tv shows like i found myself watching good times again because right after yep. the gary coleman uh documentary ended it just went right over into the 70s and 80s tv <laughs> they knew shows how to keep you they knew <laughs> no it's a simple algorithm if you like yeah. this you'll like that they I, weren't wrong i might be wrong but i Feel like I was flipping through there a couple of nights ago, and they had a Six Million Dollar Man, Kolshak, the Night Stalker, some yep. Alfred Hitchcock, lots of yeah. really great old stuff. Yeah, so it's it's not bad. So and her, the, oh, sorry, no, the only reason so I her. bought the the higher tier is because, like you guys are talking about the the commercials. The most annoying thing when I first got Peacock is if you just want to rewind right before the commercial break and you don't hit it just right, it'll just play it again. You gotta again, watch the whole commercial break. That's so what I mean. Like, it just takes away from the experience. I was like, enough. So I just paid for the ad free because I can't. Yeah, that's the whole point. They want it to be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they have to come up with whether or not you're going to... What is the point where you decide either to pay more or rage quit? Because I rage quit. Well, that's for you to decide. Um, I don't have to make that decision because it's on my wife's credit card. Because <laughs> I'm not paying for the Shaws of Sunset or the real <laughs> housewives of, of 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 Salt Lake City. <laughs> no, that's a real show. Really? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're everywhere. Or the Potomac. There's like 12 of them. Yeah, the only reason I know that is because every time I come home, they're on the freaking TV. It's recently watched or, you know, right. you're going through your <laughs> right. stuff. It's like, I didn't choose to watch that. <laughs> Don't use my account. You know, because I should say my profile. Because then it, all of a sudden, it thinks that I want to see that. So it keeps You have a predilection more. to sister wives. I knew it. Not I at all. always knew it. No. Every time I come home, especially on the weekend, she is on the couch watching the latest of whatever those shows. And um, I, I can't get into it. And, and Mark was right. Um, they do have. A He's l- not right. He's never right. About a lot it's of. killing you, isn't it? <laughs> they have a lot of sports events exclusively that yeah. only they can stream. Like that whole drama with the football game a few months ago but Mm -hmm. like they have wrestling and obviously they had the olympics so i know i think there's a real house husbands there is there is there you go i'm not watching that either i'm not watching any of that yeah no men are gonna watch that stuff one way or the other for us no no get out of here (laughs) recommending that trash to me (laughs) kfi am 640 live everywhere in the iHeartRadio app not just stimulating talk it's more KFI and KOST HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live.